Designing a journal page can be daunting, despite the beautiful supplies that we have. And even when we have an idea, as a page evolves, it can sometimes just go wrong. So in this week's video, I'm sharing some tips for designing a page in this journal using papers and watercolour paint. And it's not that I have all the answers or that I even get it right every time. I just hope to encourage and inspire your own creativity, your junk journal pages and your playtime with paint. And if you do have a passion for paper, for junk journals, then hit the subscribe button and ring the little notification bell because I have lots more videos and ideas to come. So I've chosen this page in the journal. And with a fold out on the left, there's plenty of scope for design. And indeed, my first design tip is to get some colour on the page and just take away some of that white space. So I'm just mixing up some purple. It's a very weak wash from my White Nights palette. And I'm putting two colours on the page that are a real feature of my design. And really what I do from the beginning of a journal page is have a colour palette in mind, have an idea of two or three colours that I want to feature across the whole page. And as this design is inspired by a walk in the woods, I really want to put some of that fresh green on the page as well as the purple from the flower that I've been inspired by. I'm just taking a page out, and I know that some of you will be saying eek as I rip the page out of the book. And here I'm just tearing out the flower to give it an interesting edge and just being quite careful to protect as much of the rest of the page as possible so that I can use that on another occasion. I reach for a mix of papers from my stash in a range of textures and patterns and colours but all within the same colour palette. The large piece of paper at the back has got a little bit of text on it and I like to include a bit of text in the design of a spread. So have a go at placing the focal point on your journaling page. It might work in a number of places so have a think what suits you best. And here I'm just doing a little bit of layering. I'm just putting a darker shade of paper behind the flower to, to lift it and to make it pop a bit on the page. And I don't like that little bit sticking out at the top, so that just gets torn off. I'm sticking the papers down using a little glue stick. In the previous videos, I was using liquid glue, but I'm just trying a dry glue for a change to see how that goes. It would be great to know your top tips for doing a journaling page. So if you do have some ideas, do drop a comment in the box down below. Now we have our focal point on the page. And I'm just measuring up a piece to go on the left to cover up a little bit more of the white space. And this piece of paper has a creamy background, which works really well with the other pieces of paper on the page. So a little bit of measuring and a little bit more tearing. And plenty of glue to keep it in place. and it just needs a little bit of trimming but I quite like the fact that it sticks out too far so I'm just going to keep that and just trim it at the bottom and I think it's starting to come together what do you think? 
One of the tips I have for designing a page is to think about the details and the details can really make a difference and rounding the corners is just a part of that. A border on a page is another example of a detail that can really help a page pop. I really like the border on this postcard that was sent to me by Spanky from Spanky's Crafty Corner. I'll link her channel in the description box down below. Spanky has a really fun and varied crafting channel so do take a look and have a look at some of her videos they are really really fun. Junk journal pages are about having fun so it's good that this border is drawn freehand and it doesn't matter if the lines are a little bit wiggly in fact the wiggles seem to add a little something and because I want to keep to my palette of purples and greens I'm going to be using this lovely little journaling card that came to me in a happy mail yesterday. So thank you Natalie Bowers for sharing some of these gorgeous crafting supplies with me. I will definitely be using these in some of my other junk journal pages. Natalie is a very talented artist and is producing some beautiful works of art as part of the 100 day project at the moment. And again I will put her channel in the description box down below. I'm using this little journaling card as a pocket so it needs a little bit of glue along two sides and then just positioning down here on the left. I did think about putting a pocket on the page on the right hand side and this is just a sample of some of the pockets that we made last week so do check out last week's video if you're interested in making some two tier pockets. But I've decided a better design choice is a little envelope. So here I'm just choosing between some of the ones I've already made. And although these little purple decorated pockets go with the purple of the flower on the left, I actually think I want a contrast and I want some green on the right hand side. So I'm using some of the papers that you saw before to decorate a little envelope. I have a really easy step-by-step -step process for making envelopes and you'll be able to find that in one of my previous videos. This little envelope is made with glossy paper and then I've just put some older map paper on the front to give it a little vintage effect. And I'm just cutting down a piece from an old encyclopedia and what this will give me is contrast between the text size on the encyclopedia page and the map that goes behind it. The little measurement point here, the marker that you can see, will give me a piece of paper that goes two thirds of the way across the envelope. Just tidying up the corners again. And I want a flash of colour, I want a flash of purple to keep that coordination. So I'm just adding from this paisley patterned paper to the front of the envelope. Ripping along both sides. And placing it vertically on the envelope behind the little piece of encyclopedia paper. And I don't mind again that a little bit sticks out top and bottom. So here we do have another design feature which is a contrast of vertical and horizontal pieces as well as a contrast in terms of font and the map behind. And I'm adding another little bit of detail in the form of a stamp. The stamp is a waistcoat with some text above it and again it gives some extra detail for the eye. It's also one that's quite easy to paint which is a lot of fun. I've mixed a fresh green colour from the palette which goes with the sense that this is all about a walk in the woods, the sense of it being springtime. And if you're interested in another example of an envelope, check out 49 Dragonfly's channel 
I will put a link in the description box down below. She's just done a fantastic video making an envelope and making it look really vintage and aged. And this time I'm adding a border with lines and dots, which just gives it a bit of a whimsical feel. And to bring the page together, I'm just pulling a few bits of paper from my scraps, from my ephemera stash. I made this tag and I've added a little organza ribbon. And here's a little piece of music paper, also done with a green colour wash. Just attaching the envelope on the right hand side here. And I put the purple on the envelope towards the bottom of the page, just to balance it out a little bit. I'm using some checkered washi tape, just for a little bit of extra decoration on the middle page here. And three is a good number for decorating, so I'm putting three little pieces down. And as text works really well as a design feature, I've chosen a poem this week by William Blake called Wildflower's Song. As I wandered in the forest, the green leaves among, I heard a wild flower singing a song. I slept on the earth in the silent night, I murmured my thought and I felt delight. In the morning I went, as rosy as morn, to seek for fresh joy, but I met with scorn. And I'm using a really strong, deep black pen here, just to give it extra emphasis on the page. And as you can see, I've put some faux stitching round the border, and I'm just tucking that into the pocket. A little bit of handwriting on the page, a walk in the woods in the spring, and a few little dots distributed over the page to finish it off. I hope a few of these design ideas are useful for your journaling. If you've enjoyed this then hit the subscribe button, ding that little notification bell and come back next week for some more fun. Bye!